We can't go anywhere. Because we're snowbound. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you might have a little bit of a hard time living amazing if you're camping and you're surprised by a snowstorm. We're actually snowed in. You can probably see the snow behind us. We have probably eight inches of snow. Right now, it looks like about that, yeah. We can't go anywhere. Even I'm talking even in our truck. We definitely can't move the camper. We have four wheel drive on the truck and we can't go anywhere. But we, fortunately, were not surprised. No, we knew it was coming and we prepared for it. Uh, unlike a few of our neighbors, unfortunately. <laughs> so we thought we'd make this video because we have talked to several people who were not prepared. Maybe you can learn from their mistakes. So a family got stuck on this hill all night here in the Wild campground in California. And they weren't the only ones stuck in the snow. Before I tell you their story, perhaps I should tell you right where we are. We are on a mountaintop about 100 miles from both LA and San Diego. However, the weather couldn't be more different. A lot of people don't understand that when you go up in elevation, the weather changes drastically. So we are at about 7,000 feet in elevation. We're not that far from San Diego where things are still warm and warm and nice there. Yeah, yeah it's probably 70 degrees there. Right? <laughs> right now it's 30 and snowing. It's been in the 20s. Inside this RV is a family of seven that came up from Orange County outside of LA and less than 100 miles from the campground. They only planned to stay one night. They were not prepared for the snow. There's a steep incline in the campground and late Saturday afternoon they could not get all the way up the hill. They were afraid to go back down because they were worried that they might slide off the road. They had chains, but they were the cable type, not robust enough for such a steep, snowy road. By Sunday afternoon, they were almost out of food and water. Their black tank was almost full, and they were just about to run out of propane. Campgrounds are full of friendly, helpful people, and here is no different as strangers work together to free them so they could go back home. We have neighbors just around the corner from us from San Diego who are not having a great time. They have a great, great attitude and they're getting through it, but the first thing that went wrong for them was that they didn't check the weather. Even if you're only a couple hours from your destination, if you're going up in elevation, you need to check the weather. They thought it was just going to rain, not realizing that actually it's snow. And now they're kind of stuck. <laughs> and to make matters worse, their furnace quit working. Tip number two is to make sure that your furnace works before you leave and also make sure that you have enough propane. If you're going to a higher elevation and there's a, even the slightest chance that, the, that it might snow, you just want to make sure your tanks are full before you leave home. If you haven't been doing a lot of RVing, you may not realize, but your furnace takes an awful lot of propane. It may only run for a couple days on a smaller tank. So you definitely want to make sure that your propane is full. And also, I'd even say you should turn off your hot water, don't you think? Oh, if you're, yeah, use electric for your hot water only. If you have that option. We're yeah. lucky that we have a dual hot water. Most campers are just solo with the propane. In their case, it's not that they didn't come up here without propane. They've got plenty of propane. The problem is that there's something wrong with the, with the furnace. I suspect it's the flame sensor because it lights and then goes out about five seconds later. Speaking of heat, um, now I don't know, you can hear it's actually sleeting out there. But speaking of heat, you want to have an alternate source of heat. So you want electric and propane. So bring a space heater. We're really lucky we have an electric fireplace. We also have a heat pump in addition to our furnace. You always want a backup because these rigs, they're, no matter how much you spend on your camper, they're not well insulated. You'll get cold really fast. And a fail-safe if 
everything else fails is to have sleeping bags that are good for you know sub-zero temperatures. These folks with the broken furnace did not have a backup heat source, but at least they had blankets. They spent their first night, Friday night, huddled under them, trying to keep warm as temperatures outside were in the mid-twenties. Late Saturday afternoon, they decided to call it quits and leave the mountain in their car. Unfortunately, they got stuck in the snow and ended up spending all of Saturday night in their car. They kept turning it on intermittently, just trying to keep warm. The battery died the next day and they had to get a jump. They definitely had an epic time. You want to make sure that your freshwater tank is full because your supply hose will freeze. You won't be getting any water through it. And <laughs> now there are supply hoses that you can get that have a heat wrap on them that you plug in. They'll keep water flowing for, for a good while. I would suggest that if you're going to be in cold weather a lot, not just once or, once or twice a year, probably a good idea to just have one of those heated hoses on board. Mm -hmm. We'll put a link in the description. But then you may have a problem with your tap freezing at the campground, which is what yeah, happened to yeah, us. Yeah, ours did, yeah. yeah. I actually had to go out and, and pour hot water on it to get the uh, ice to melt. Right, so with water you need an alternate source too. Fill your fresh tank. Make sure that your vehicle is prepared to drive in the snow. In the, in the case of this Class C RV, they just could not get up the hill even with these cable chains on them. The rangers were worried that, you know, if somebody had an emergency up here and had to get out, there was no path, there was no way out. So you really want to make sure that you um, over prepare in your vehicle, making sure that it can handle it, making sure that you have experience driving in the snow. Just make sure you're stocked up so you don't yeah. need to go anywhere. Yeah. I mean, we know we're going to be snowbound for a few days. We're on day two. We're fine. The next tip is to make sure that you're prepared. So if you're going outside, because you might have to go out and do some work or just check things outside, you yeah. know, hopefully nothing will go wrong. But if you need to go out to like you had to do, you had to go out to the faucet. Yeah. You want to make sure that you have the winter clothes. Um, I'm using rain pants or just some kind of waterproof pants because, you know, I'm walking mango out in it and also have some things to do for inside and out. If you have kids, of course, bring sleds and some things like that just to have some fun outside or right now we have so much snow that snowshoes would be fun. You know, we've basically been housebound, so you want to have some games, yeah. right? Yeah, like we said in the beginning, we, we knew the snow was coming, so uh, we prepared. Yeah, one thing we did um, the day before the snow arrived was I picked up all of our chairs. We had our, our uh, lounge chairs out. Right, and it's a good idea to remove small things that may get lost in the snow. We have a, um, a retractable leash for mango that's outside, and I couldn't even find it now. If you think there's a chance that you'll be leaving before all the snow melts, you just remove any small things while you can still see them. When you get ready to go, if, if you still have snow all over your rig, you're going to want to brush it as much of it as you can off. If you pull in your slide with there's still snow in there, you're going to run the risk of having that snow melt and get into your walls and, and really cause some problems. It's also going to put an awful strain on the mechanism that, that runs the slide um, because you're going to be trying to compress all of that snow. Um, the motor will only pull so much torque. I would want to clear it all off actually before I pulled the slide. Get in. it all off. You don't want to risk your camper having water in the walls or messing up your slide mechanism because that could be so expensive. Yeah, or you could just be stuck if it busts the motor, the spur gear that the motor drives the mechanism with. You're you're not going anywhere with the slide out until you can get it back in. That's why when we bought our rig, we had them install toppers. So I'm still going to push as much of the snow off of the toppers as I can. If you have any flexibility in your schedule, the best thing would be to wait until things thaw out yeah. so that you're not trying to drive in the snow. You don't have to worry about your slides being frozen open or your slide toppers or if you have your awning out. So now this was our first time that we've ever been in snow and we've both been on the road now for two years. And this is day two on snow. And, and, and what do you think about our future as far as winter camping? How do we like winter camping? I'm going to try to avoid it. <laughs> we knew it was coming and, you know, it was great for the novelty of it. 
I have to say that I'm done with it because it really did make us housebound. You know, we love to bike, as you know, we have a bike channel. I love to hike. We like to get out and do stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's really kept us indoors. And even though we're only on day two, that, that's enough for me to know that I'm kind of done with winter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see why people from Canada come down to Arizona <laughs> right. for the winter. Uh, this stuff gets old fast. And that's really one of the beauties of RV life and full-time RV living is that we can go anywhere and we can just pick up our house and move and we can decide that, you know what, we don't want to do snow ever again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two things now that I want to avoid, and one I knew about before is, is extreme heat. I don't like temperatures much above 90 degrees now extreme cold <laughs> we're always looking for that 70 degrees yeah. you know 70 degrees high 75 is awesome lows in the 40s or 50s is great yeah but <laughs> yeah that's, that's the sweet spot we're going to be chasing 70 degrees around we would love to hear from you though about any winter tips and you know tell us some more of the good things about winter because we we really uh <laughs> We're okay for a couple days, but we know some people will go out for weeks. So tell us what you do with your time, how you enjoy it. 